Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome to another episode of The Wave. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome back to the weekly news and chat show from the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. We're back for another week. We are indeed. Week three of season 10? It is. Wow. Yeah. Season 10 is going really quickly. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, that means, so last week on our movie show, which you can find here every Thursday, uh, we talked about our first Patreon wildcard choice. We did indeed, of yes. the season. A Korean movie called The Call. Yeah. Which, of the two movies we've seen so far this season, it's tops the stream tops table. The, currently tops the stream table is the better one. No Halle Berry in sight. No. It's quite a good little just timey-wimey horror movie. Just a magic time phone. Yes. Absolutely was a magic time phone. Why not? Huh. We can talk about anything on this show. But it was, it was, it, it was, was good. A, it, was, it was. I thought it was a fun way to. It was a strong a couple of hours. Strong start to the wild card race yeah. for season ten. Everybody's got to come all guns blazing now. Sure, if that's what you want to do. Yes, if that's what you want to <laughs> do. If you want to win it, you're going to need to beat the call. Uh, and if you come back this Thursday, we're going to talk about. Uh, a German comedy movie. A German comedy movie. The h- Hard Feelings? Yeah. I only said Hard Times, but that was a no, different movie we did a different movie a few seasons about ago. About erections that we did a few seasons ago. <laughs> Which was Irish. Which was Irish. Hard Feelings is not doesn't star Jennifer Lawrence, who also had a feel film come out last year called Hard Feelings. Did you? Yes. It's not that film. <laughs> um, yeah, German comedies. Yeah. Interesting idea. It's like a teen sex comedy, isn't it? Yeah, it's sex education meets Big Mouth meets American Pie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, come back here on Thursday and we'll talk about that. Yeah, definitely will. How have you been, Nick? Pretty good. Yeah? Not I just... Much. Uh, I don't... Nothing ex- that exciting springs to mind. I went for a long walk on last Sunday. Nice. Uh, with family to wear them all out. That was good. And uh, <laughs> Did it work? It was a bit cold, but not as cold as it's been this week. Like, Today I... Today was <laughs> really cold. I, so, I... It was like minus five this morning. Mm. I had to get a train. Oh, wow. Uh, to... To go to this thing for work, and my, I'd wrapped up warm enough. I was like, oh, "I'll get there ten minutes early, wait for the train." In the back of my mind, I was like, "This train's going to be late because yeah. it's cold, and yeah. our transport system will just fall apart." Yes, and I had to wait on the platform for forty-five minutes. Oh no! And I was like, so cold by the time Freezing. the train came. It was nearly. It was minus six and a half in my car on the way to work <laughs> this morning. Stand outside in that. So from like. Eight what belong getting frostbit from like eight o'clock to eight forty-five? I was stood on this. Wow! <laughs> Wait for this train. And when I got to this thing, hmm. we had to do an icebreaker. Oh, I God. thought, oh, you'd like this because you had to use one word to describe <laughs> yourself. And but the trick was, the person before you, you had to use the last letter of the word that they'd used to describe themselves. Got you. And someone left me with a Y. Oh. <laughs> What, what would I describe you? Let me see what I would have said if I was in your position about you. So it's a one word starting with a Y to describe you. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> why is not the easiest letter? No, it think. isn't. The only one that comes to mind is youthful, but you're not that. I nearly said youthful. Did you? <laughs> and that was going through my brain. And then I thought, why do I need to stick to the rules? And I didn't use one word. <laughs> because Cause you're Nick, and why that? would you use one word? So I said... Young at heart. Yeah. I'd, uh, yeah, that's perfect. It's not one word. But when have you ever... Did you tell people that you've always broken that rule in the past? <laughs> no, I didn't get into the <laughs> explanation of why I was finding this funnier than uh, <laughs> anyone else in the room. So, I uh, think if I'd have been in the room, I'd have laughed my head off at that. How, how have you been? I'm all right. I went away for the weekend last weekend. Yep. Which, hence the reason the podcasts were a bit rushed out. Apologies if uh, there was any editing issues in them. I don't think there was. Nobody said anything. We didn't do any editing, did we? No. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> We're um, pro- we're yeah, I went to uh, Centre Parks for a weekend, so that was quite nice. Good. Did you have a good time? I did. I had a great time. Really good time. Really good fun. Definitely going to go more often, I think. Uh, I've come back full of a cold, which hopefully nobody can <laughs> pick up on the mics. That's because but... you have been near general public. It's because I've been outside, for one, which I yeah. never do. And I've been in water, which I've also never do. <laughs> and I've been near the general public, which, again, don't very often And in do. water with the general public. <laughs> in water with the general public, yes. And a young niece of mine who... Kids are always germ factories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've come back full of a cold, but apart from that, I'm okay. It's, it's it was good. good time. It was good. I've not had a lot of time to do anything else, as in watching and stuff. But we'll come to that later on. Okay, that's fine. Uh, before we get to the news, yes, let's 
play a game. Oh, before before the start of this podcast? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm changing it up. Change it up. And, I like it. Uh, I'm going to... I've got a question of the week, but I'll do that at the end. Okay, fine. <laughs> all, the, all the rules are out <laughs> the window. I... We did, before Christmas, remember we did the sort of uh, either-or questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a load for you, and then a couple of weeks later, you did a load for me. And I was yes. like, this would be an interesting way to learn more about how your brain works. Oh, God. So I've got another similar thing like that. Right. But this one is called Got Got Need. Okay. So I've got a list of things. Yep. And you tell me if you've got one. Yep. And, or if you need one. What if I don't need one and have one? Well, you can say that. Okay. Because it, it just might be quite interesting to see. What what are these fairly random things do you own and why? Okay, that sounds fun. I like that idea. So if you've got it, say got. got. If you need it, or you think, oh, yeah, say need. Need. And there might be some that fall in the middle. And if not, I'll say not got. Yeah. Or don't need. Okay. Ready? Yes. A spiralizer. Not got. Don't need. No. no. I don't need a lot of veg. Never fancied <laughs> spiraling some mm, no. courgette. I'm not a courgette guy. <laughs> Uh, an actual physical map. N- not got. I've, no, I don't think I have. How no. do you get places? Fat enough phone. <laughs> Modern technology. Do you remember, uh, my, uh, was your dad the same? Did you have the Atlas in My dad still has the... an Atlas in his car. Still <laughs> to this day has an Atlas in his car. Uh, no, I haven't got one. Don't I mean, one. the industry of Atlases, like road Atlases, it's must, crazy. They must be nearly dead, is it? Yeah, but it's not though, is it? I don't know. You, we see them everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, to W.A. Smith's, I bet they've got loads. Yeah, probably. Okay, so you've got neither of those. No. Interesting start. A lighter. Got. Okay. What, like a... Candle Like lighter a flip lighter or a, like a oven, like a long... I've got a an old-fashioned... Are they Bic lighters? Yeah. I've got one of them, and I've also got like a long candle okay. lighter thingy. A, a lip balm. Need? Yeah? Yeah. I think it's always good to have a... Don't have one currently. Yeah, especially if you're getting ill. Yeah, exactly. Might get chap lips. I do have a bit sore lips. A, a magnifying glass. N- not got. Might need. <laughs> what would you need a magnifying glass? Well, I've just glass got a 3D for? printer, so if yeah. I need to like look at the layer lines and things like yeah. that, maybe I might maybe need one. Maybe you need one. to look for imperfections. Need. I'm going to buy one. And you're getting old, so you might. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> read need books to... with it. <laughs> a drill. Got. Nice. Couple of. Oh, really? Yeah. Handsy. Uh, Sunglasses. Got. One pair? So, or several yeah, pairs? Several Funct- pairs. Functional fashion? Both. Okay. Uh, peanut butter. Got. I went through a stage of making my own cereal bars. So for recipes? For recipes. Would you I don't li- I don't have eat... peanut butter no. just as a... Because in my house, we go through loads. Like, I... As it's pro- I would say it's probably the preferred toast... I don't like it. on in my family. I don't like the texture of peanut butter in my mouth. Right. I think it's too greasy oh. and claggy. What if but you have crun- crunchy? Or d- Crunchy's could- not peanut butter. No, like... Oh, crunchy peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not so I'm not so keen on smooth. I've got smooth. I don't have crunchy. But that's because I made these cereal bars that use peanut butter as like the bind. Yeah. So I think I've got some in the cupboard downstairs. But I wouldn't pick it as a topping for anything. Okay. I'm not a fan. Uh, a hair dryer. Got. Have you? Yes. Good. I wasn't expecting <laughs> you to say you've got a hair dryer. No, you've got a hair dryer. A uh, last one, an apron. Got. Two. Mm. Pizza man, and I? Are they... Are, do they have specific use? Have you got a pizza apron and I've then got a pizza other, apron other cooking and apron. an apron I've had for a long time. Or are they all just... I would. Fuck it, when I, I tend to apron. just wear the pizza apron. All the, if I need to wear an apron, I would wear it for that. I wouldn't okay. wear the one very often. Congratulations, you've completed <laughs> Got Got Need. I enjoyed Got Got Need. That was a fun game. I will. Maybe I'll do one for you next week. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the question of the week because it's only a quick one. Right. Um, I've just been listening to a podcast on my way in from work tonight, and they asked this question, and I thought I'm going to ask Nick that because I feel like he'd have a different answer to me and most of the rest of the world. Oh God. <laughs> It's not, a, it's not a would you rather or anything like that. It's a genuine question that I'm going to ask you to impart some knowledge about your life on. Sure. What is the furthest distance you have ever walked naked? Um, I, I don't think it's going to be massively far. No, that's what these guys were saying on this podcast. It feels like you have no inhibitions about being naked, but you never actually walk very far naked. First question is, have I, have I been outside naked? 
Yes. You have. I know you have. <laughs> have I don't think I've walked very far. No. I've been in my garden naked. I don't think I've ever been outside naked. It would probably be... It would be a matter of metres. Yeah. Like I've, probably less than 10. I've been to my kitchen. Un- unless... From upstairs. That's I'm probably my, about as far as I've been. I might have spent half an hour naked walking around the house. Yeah. So if you wanted to like cumulate distance. Cumulate the distance. But that feels like that's half not Half an hour quite... feels like a long time to be naked. <laughs> that feels like that's not quite in the spirit of the question. Yeah. I'm more taking it as a like, when have you gone from point A to point B? Yeah. It it's would not be a, far, it is would it? be a matter of meters. I'm yeah. surprised by that. I thought you'd be like I've not gone uh, a mile. Like... <laughs> 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 I can't think of a time where I've I've been there. I've I've had to walk. I think my, the furthest I've naked. been is from my bedroom to the kitchen. So you're talking a few steps. A few, yeah, downstairs. <laughs> and that's only because I've left something on or something downstairs when I've gone to bed. Not clothed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to have a real partridge where I was like, text in if you ever walked. Yeah, let us know in really the Discord or on, on any of the socials. What's the furthest distance you've ever walked naked? Like, totally naked. Totally naked. Yeah. If anybody's done more than a mile, they can have a prize. I don't know what it is. You've done, like, skinny dipping and stuff. Yeah. But, d- but that's not worse, women. Yeah. <laughs> Did you walk to the skinny dipping naked? Yeah, like from the yeah, from like either the 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 room or the that's uh, quite a distance there maybe, or the the uh, sunbed. <laughs> it wasn't. Oh, it doesn't matter. But anyway, <laughs> that was twenty years ago this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> good um, good times. Yeah, I thought that was quite an interesting one. It made me laugh when they were talking about it on this podcast. I've just been listening to. Right, shall we do some Netflix news? Sure. Which one of these? Uh, let's on? start with the non-Netflix news. So okay. <laughs> this week was the Emmys. Yes, it was. So, I mean, I'm li- I don't really want to spend any time on it because the, very the winners were the very Globes. similar, nay, almost identical to the Golden Globes, which we covered last week. So Succession, The Bear, very successful. Yeah. Uh, I, I really wanted to focus on a couple of interesting offshoots of the Emmys, really. Yeah. Uh, one of those is the snub received by the final season of Better Call Saul. Yeah, is this a snub? I think it is. I'll give you a fact and you tell me if it's a snub. Okay. Because Better Call Saul has broken an Emmys record. Right. Do you know what that record is? No. The most Emmy nominations received yeah. without winning a single one. So it's never won a single Emmy. How many In that no- case, it is a snub. How many nominations do you think it's had? How long? 20? 53. 53 nominations never won a single Emmy. Correct. For anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's a snub. <laughs> it's just a massive snub. Better that's insane, is an incredible TV show. Yeah, that is insane. I had no idea that that was the case. That has absolutely blown my mind. That is dis- that's disgusting. <laughs> that's uh, what that is. And you usually, you're in this situation where we've seen before, this is the final series of this yes. show and it's not got anything. Yeah, uh, normally in the final season, that's when they get As was Succession. Things. Exactly, that was going to be my point. It's like, you've got two big shows that both ended this year. But they did not Equally even out. each other out. If there's anybody better in the last season of Succession than there is Bob Odenkirk in the last season of Better Call Saul, Rhea Seahorn's never won an acting award. That's disgusting. That makes me feel physically ill. Excuse me. That makes me feel ill. Bob Odenkirk in the last season of Better Call Saul is as good as anybody ever was in Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't disagree. And if anybody in Succession is better than that, who won Best Actor? Kieran Culkin. Yeah, who you also win the Golden Globe. Kieran Culkin is no way. I've not seen Succession. I've no interest in watching it. <laughs> but There's no way he's better than Bob Oldenkirk in Better Call Saul. I'm I also, uh, uh, we'll just quickly mention, it. also Beef won a lot yes, in terms did. of the limited yeah. series and also the actors actors for the, that time. But we've kind of, we've heard before that they're, it's not, 
it's not been commissioned, but they're looking at a second season. Yeah. And then it's like, well, you can't take the award back because then it's not a limited <laughs> series. It's a good point. It's season two. It's a drama series. Though. I wonder if they have to call it something out, make it like a separate <laughs> season. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's, I find it odd. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention about the Emmys yep. is the success of... Is he? A, I think he's a sir, isn't he? Sir Elton John? Oh, he's massively a sir. Yeah, he's big friends with the royals. Now, Elton John uh, won an Emmy... Yep. Um, this year for a live special, concert special. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, be- well, I can't remember what the exact award was. Best live performance, performance. or something like yeah. that. Because uh, he's, he's been doing his farewell tour, hasn't he, for the yeah. last four years. Okay. Um, so he won an Emmy for that. And he has joined a very exclusive club. Are you aware of the EGOT? I am aware of the EGOT. Yeah, the EGOT, for anyone who doesn't know, is... An acronym given for people who have won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. There isn't many of them, is there? There are 19. Wow. Elton John has become the 19th person in the whole history of the world ever (laughs) to achieve this. Which two together do you think are the hardest to win? Because I feel like Emmy and Golden Globe, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You can win them. I think it very much depends what your profession is. Yes. Because there is someone on this list who really stands out. Okay. And that is, uh, I think, uh, you've probably heard the name. It's a guy called Alan Menken. I do know the name. I don't know what, he's a, who he is. He's a composer. Right, okay. And he uh, he's written a, he written a lot, worked on a lot of Disney so, uh, classics and animated yeah. uh, uh, movies and, and, and musicals. He's got eight Oscars. Eight Oscars? Yeah. Wow. And he won them all between 1990 and 1996. He won eight Oscars in six years. That's crazy. This guy, he's got... uh, That's more Oscars than there are awards. Yeah. He's got 11 Grammys. Wow. (laughs) Um, But only one Tony and one Emmy. So he has absolutely smashed the... In terms of number of awards. Smashed the... he's, He's probably the standout. Is it Grammy or Golden Globe? Grammy. Uh, Grammy. Grammy. Okay. I feel um, like... So I think... I'm not dissing composers. It's an amazing talent. It's incredible. But if you... If you're... As you're in com- that Disney hit factory. Yeah. You're... You feel like that's an easier way into the EGOT. Than, and, and obviously that's played a part for Elton John. But I feel like... Get, as a composer, it must be really difficult to win an Emmy. Okay. Do you know what Possibly. I mean? Possibly. Possibly. For an actor, it'd be quite difficult to win a Grammy and a Tony. Yeah. Whereas for a composer, winning an Emmy is going to be quite difficult, but getting an Oscar may be quite easy Maybe. as this guy. So Alan so, Menken got an Emmy for Outstanding Original Song in a Children's Young Adult or Animated Program. Okay. But it was a Disney animated TV show. Yeah. So... Uh, Look, he's obviously had a lot so it's of quite, opportunities. It's quite easy for a singer to win a Grammy, but quite difficult for a singer to win an Oscar. Well, you say that. So, <laughs> there's some really interesting names on this. Go on. I, I think you would just... You, you'd think, oh, that, that that's really surprised me. So I'll, I'll pick a I few out. I don't know any off the top of my head. Okay, so I'll pick, I pick a few out. And no. also, what is interesting we might talk about is like the span it's, the span of time it time took span. them to complete the, complete the set. So... um. You should get an extra award for getting one, shouldn't you? you should be, this should be like a, this is an EGOT award. Yeah. So in terms of absolute legends of the skill, silver screen who've, who've got EGOTs, yeah. uh, Audrey Hepburn. Okay. Uh, who won her first, she won an Oscar and a Tony in 1954 uh, and didn't win a Grammy till 1994. Okay. So 40 years it took her. Wow. Uh, John Gielgud. Right. Um, he he's done it. Uh, Mel Brooks. Okay, but that's someone who is yeah. stage and screen. Yeah, you can imagine. Yeah, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg. Again, you done can't the whole set. I can see her getting an Emmy easily. Oscar, Tony, yeah, but Grammy, I find quite. She won a Grammy for Sister Act. Uh, she would. She. Won a Grammy in 1986 for Best Comedy Album. Comedy Album? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, Tony for starring in Thoroughly Modern Millie. Uh, Best Supporting Actress Oscar for Ghost. And she has two Emmys. Okay. Uh, one for an educational film and one f- as outstanding talk show host. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Again. But write songs for all yeah. these. All those. But how does he go? How does he win an Emmy? Uh, I can tell you. <laughs> there's just like, there's there's one that's more difficult for everybody. Uh, outstanding variety special. Okay. For Jesus Christ Lu- Superstar live in concert. So it's, so he's won an Emmy for what he should be winning a Tony. Yeah, for. and they just recorded it. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean, though? For every single person, it's diff- more difficult to get one of them than somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tim Rice, who you'd, I suppose yeah. you'd expect, works with Elton John. Yeah. Uh, John Legend. Okay. Only took him 12 years to do it. Wow. Who did it quickest? Uh, I can tell you that in a second. Okay. I want to give you a couple couple more. You I might presume Audrey Hepburn did it the longest. Uh, no, I will double check in a sec. Okay. Jennifer Hudson. Okay. We've got them all. Uh and the last person to do it before Elton John, Viola Davis. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, in terms of who took the longest, that would be uh, Helen Hayes. Okay. Uh, who was, uh, was an actress. Uh, and she won her first one in 1932, when she won right. the Oscar. Yeah. Uh, and she didn't win her Grammy until 1977, which is wow. 45 years. Wow. Uh, Robert Lopez, the composer, did it in 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. So he's a guy behind Frozen, um, two Oscars. Uh, he won an Emmy for the songs of WandaVision, um, Grammys for Book of Mormon, uh, and Tony's for Avenue Q. I love Avenue Q. I've seen that twice on stage. It's brilliant. Yeah, 10 years. Wow. Took him to do it. Yeah, only 19 people. That's quite the elite. Hmm, it is. It's like an elite list. crew. I if they obviously can't all ever be in the same room. There's, they're not all going to be still alive. No. <laughs> How many are alive? <laughs> oh, I've, I've, no, I've, so I've turned the page off now. Go and look for it yourself. Why, 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 why are we on awards? Did you see the BAFTA nominations came out today? Yes, they have. Um... Go on, you, you mentioned... I, I just, I haven't got a, any news story an or anything from the snub again. There is, a, there is a snub there because... Compared to what we've seen at the Emmys and the Golden Globes. Yes, because Martin Scorsese has not been nominated for Best Director for Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio has not been nominated for Killers of the Flower Moon. And forgive me, I do not know the lady's name that won the Golden Globe. Lily Golden. Gladstone? Yes. She has not been nominated for a BAFTA for that yeah. performance. And she won the Golden Globe on Sunday, which is... A snubbing for that film? It's interesting, isn't it? Barbie hasn't been nominated as best film. Mm-hmm. Hmm. People need to get over themselves. Barbie's they a do. brilliant film. They Barbie's, really do you tell me Barbie's not one of the, what, how many do they nominate? Six, eight best films eight of the year? Yeah. A BAFTA's do it different because they do, BAFTA's do, I think they do six best films and then they do like 10 best British films. Yeah. Because Oppenheimer's been nominated for Best Film, but Poor Things has been nominated, which I spent to see the other week, yeah. for Best British Film. And that has, they're the two that have got the most nominations. Okay. okay. Yeah, the BAFTA, BAFTA's is always an interesting one. Good. Right, let's move on to Netflix news. Let's do it. Uh, and this week, uh, Netflix games head Mike Verdu has yes. been talking and he has said Netflix is not currently building any more interactive shows. Oh, okay, like Bandersnatch and things like that. Yes, and there was a rom-com one recently, wasn't there? Yes. We've seen the Kimmy Schmidt one. But Bear Grylls, Grylls has done a couple, yeah. yeah. Um, Verdu said, we are not building those specific experiences anymore. Okay. Uh we think the concept set a ceiling on what was possible and it wasn't helped by its very limiting technology. Uh, but he added, we had, Netflix had learned a lot from these, these programs, uh, but we think we, we are going to be pivoting into interactive narrative games. Okay, that makes more sense. So I think these will be like your companion games to... Some of the big yeah. releases going forward. Surprised they've been limited by technology. I don't feel like anybody's been limited by technology at the minute. I feel like with AI and things like that, 
Anything is possible. Yeah, it feels like a bit like giving up to me. Yeah. Oh, come it on, does, lads. Yeah. We'll just focus <laughs> on Netflix. the games instead. <laughs> I don't know if that's a shame. I don't think there's ever... Part, I don't, has there ever been a good one? I mean, I've, no, I've never watched Bandersnatch. It, Bandersnatch it is... I was really disappointed by the Kimmy Schmidt one. Yeah, I was as well. I felt like it was directing me. Yeah, it, 100% it was. It was, it was, it was half past 10. Bandersnatch is okay. Was there a wrestling one? Uh, I feel like there was a wrestling sure. one with the Undertaker and I think some people. Yeah, but I think there. I think they they were sort of mostly proof of concept ones. There yeah. was like some quizzy ones as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There? there was. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I don't think I missed that. Uh, Netflix is pleased to announce that <laughs> Society of the Snow yes. is doing some good numbers. This is on my list. Early on. Uh, in fact, in its first 11 days after release, it has hit 51 million views. That's good for a foreign language movie. Yes. Uh, if it carries on with the same sort of numbers in its uh, first month or so, it is set to enter the top 10 best ever performances wow. by a non-English language movie. Its debut, i.e. its first weekend, uh, was the third best ever on Netflix by a non-English language movie behind only Troll and, and Nowhere. Nowhere, which was last year, wasn't yeah, it? It was. Uh, it's, it's critically getting some really it good... It really is. I, good buzz. I've added, it, I've added it to my list, but I was hoping somebody else would watch it first because it's quite long. Oh, is it? I wanted to, yeah, I think it's like two and a half hours long. So I, I wanted to get some uh, reviews of it. I feel like I watched it. Alive a lot when yeah. it was... It's like a remake of Alive. Yeah, yeah, it? it's yeah. the same story. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would like to get to I will get to it eventually. I will do it this weekend. That's my commitment to you. And I will talk about it next week. Okay. Netflix has... Or, well, actually, no. Netflix has not announced. Okay. This announcement has come from author R.L. Stein. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, who... Has tweeted, no, he hasn't. He's exed, <laughs> whatever the whatever that, that is. Uh, he 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 exed the following movie news. I can finally announce that a new Fear Street movie is about to go into production at Netflix. All right. Uh, it is based on my Fear Street book, The Prom Queen. Good nice. news. I thought we were done with them. I wasn't expecting any more. Uh, yeah, this is the obviously the fourth Fair Street movie from his series of books. How were they three years ago? Yeah, that's <laughs> that crazy, is isn't crazy. it? Crazy. Well, yeah, but they were Halloween, so really it's only two in a couple of months, isn't it? Can you tell by this website that I've been looking at new settees on the internet <laughs> that all of the adverts are for safety? Um, the book, we haven't got a synopsis of the movie, but the book's description, synopsis, blurb, that's the word for books. Uh, a spring night, a soft moonlight, five beautiful prom queen candidates, dancing couples at the shady side high prom. These should be the ingredients for romance, but stir in one brutal murder, then another, and another, and the recipe quickly turns to horror. Ooh, sounds good. Yeah. Excellent. We'll keep our eyes on that one then. Cool, exciting. In really niche Netflix news. <laughs> right. Um, That's what we're all about. <laughs> uh, Netflix are apparently going to look at less populating your algorithm with the thumbs based on the thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. Uh, and they are going to go all in on tags. Tags? Yeah. So, so if you watch a lot of things tagged with this, we'll recommend some more. Exactly. Right. Uh, Netflix product director, Alan Donald. Sounds like a made up name. Yeah, it does. Uh, said it. <laughs> well, it is. Somebody made it up. <laughs> Quite mom, true. Probably. Uh, said that tags make much more of a difference in that snap, this is for me decision. Okay. Apparently. Uh, I found this fascinating. The New York Times says Netflix has 30 full-time employees 
whose job is tagging shows and films. Oh, what a boring <laughs> job. Do they have to watch them? They must have to. Do you, do you want to know what the least used tag they have is? Yes. German o- comedy. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> occupation. Yeah. Colon. Farmhand. <laughs> That's the least one? <laughs> Apparently. Wow. Like, there's not many films about farmhands. Uh, apparently... We've seen at least two films with farmhands <laughs> yeah. in. Uh, the New York Times continues that Netflix is close to ditching their match percentage from the thumbs up, thumbs down uh, in favour of making tags more prominent. I've never understood that match percentage. Yeah. Everything I look at is like 98% match. Yeah. I'm like, ev- literally everything I'm going to enjoy. And then I watch something and it's like, oh, you, oh, you will love this. And it's uh, like, that's rep- shit. Yeah, exactly. A representative from Netflix confirms the New York Times Netflix is likely to remove the percentage in order to make tagging more prominent. Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine some of the shit we're going to get recommended <laughs> in our normal day-to-day algorithm? <laughs> oh, this, these guys have watched two films about boners over the last <laughs> two years. <laughs> Talking <laughs> genitalia. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, come back here on Thursday to listen to, talk about, <laughs> listen to us talk about hard feelings. <laughs> okay, I think think that's all the Netflix news. So okay, let's cool. let's let's plow on, um, and let's plow on with news that uh, David F. Sandberg, most famous for directing the Shazam movies, okay, uh, has landed his next job. And he will be making a movie adaptation of the horror video game Until Dawn. Oh, amazing. Have you ever played Until Dawn? I think I have. That's so good. Yeah. I've, played, I've completed Until Dawn twice. Yeah. And have you? Oh, yeah. wow. I don't think I've ever done that for any game uh, ever. 2015, that game came out. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I remember what, what, what's, it. what's it about? Uh, it's, it's a slasher movie. Uh... It's, it's, it, what we were just talking about interactive stories. Yeah. It's basically what it is. It's a load of guys go up to a cabin in the woods, sure. ski lodge. I think it is a ski lodge, and they get attacked by this guy who's trying to kill them all. Okay. It stars Rami Malek, in the is in the game. Yep. And Hayden Panettiere. Oh, nice. They're both in it, and it is brilliant. You ba- it's basically decision making. So yeah, I have should I've this character go it, this yeah. way or this way or it's brilliant. I love Until Dawn. I, that's very exciting. There's a really good. VR roller coaster game based on Until Dawn. Oh, cool. It was really good. It's a bit old now. The sec the sequel was shocking. Well, it's in production. So excellent. Look That's forward exciting. To that. I'll look forward to that. I wonder if they'll get Rami Malik and Hayden Panettiere in it. Why not? I feel like She's one not... would be easier than yeah. the other. <laughs> News now on a promising young talent getting a new role. Okay. Uh June Squibb. <laughs> Has signed of, up. Of this parish, June Squibb. <laughs> That's why I wanted to bring it up. Our, f- our, our favourite, is it nonagenarian? She, she's definitely in the 90s. Yeah. She's a nonna, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, has signed up for a voice role in Inside Out 2. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. How old is June Squibb? <laughs> I'm sure she's she been a... on the show twice. Yes, twice. We've seen her on bottom of the stream. Uh, she was. She is 94 currently. Yeah. She was in The Humans. She was, Last and season. would you rather? Yeah. Yeah. Um, an undisclosed role so far. Um, Old but... father time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Pixar also said that, I, I presume this is like, this must have happened ages ago, because this movie comes out, yeah, like, Soon. this summer. Yeah. And they're not voicing... as well. I think it was due They're early. not voicing it live, because <laughs> they've... <laughs> but they've also said that Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling... Are no longer involved uh, oh, okay. and, and would and dropped out um, apparently due to salary disputes. Uh, mm. They've been replaced by uh, Tony Hale and uh, Liza Lapira, who will play Fear and Disgust, respectively. Um, okay. <laughs> not her first Pixar role. Uh, June would, Squibb. Yep. Yeah, Toy Story 4. Yes. Soul. Yeah. Uh, and also, well, it's not Pixar, but Disney. Wreck, uh, Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet. Okay. So that's a, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Keep employing 94-year-old people. <laughs> it comes out on June the 14th. Yeah. So it's less than four months away. Talking months away. of the fountain of youth, <laughs> uh, John Krasinski and Natalie Portman have both signed on to star in Guy Rich's next movie. Okay. It's called The Fountain of Youth. Oh, okay. 
Interesting. Um, yeah, it's a. It sounds very much to me like a sort of Indiana Jones, Da Vinci Code type thing. Some people uh, going to try and find the Fountain of Youth. Sure, exactly. Two estranged siblings, to be exact, who have to partner on a global heist to find the mythological Fountain of Youth. They must use their knowledge of history to follow clues on an epic adventure that will change their lives. Okay. And possibly lead to immortality. Sounds like Jungle Cruise. I didn't like that. I didn't hate it. I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it. We watched a, one of our films was had the Fountain of Youth in the cave one. Where the oh, time, time trap! Time trap! Yeah, yeah. We've done so many films that I can pretty much link all of them back to something yeah, in yeah. the news. We've, now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we've covered all the tropes. Everything. There's, there's the no tropes. news stories. Uh, talking of, there's no news stories. Uh, oh Jesus! The absolute latest in what is going to just be a long line of these is that the guys behind Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, and the forthcoming Bambi the Reckoning. (laughs) That's a great title. I'm definitely watching that one. Have announced that they are working (laughs) on a horror retelling of Pinocchio. Right. uh, And it will be teased in the end credits of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Oh, is this a universe? Uh, Pinocchio Unstrung. I'll tell you what, I know Blood and Honey is shocking, but I am on board for this. <laughs> I am fully on board for all of this stuff. I love it. Uh, the cast and crew will be announced shortly. Uh, it will that be... won't matter, we won't know them. <laughs> it will be produced this summer okay. and planned for release late this year. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> Two week film time, three week editing time, get it out. Yeah. Um, if you... If you um, We'll put it in the Discord. If you go down, uh, you can see uh, a production drawing of what Pinocchio might look like. Is it this? Yeah. Oh, wow. He's a bony, toothy, horrible wretch of a boy. (laughs) I'm fully on board. Bambi the Reckoning is a great title. Yes, but look, can we just take a step back a second, right? How crap were those Winnie the Pooh masks? Yeah, they, yeah. How are you exactly. doing that with a deer? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> no, no idea. <laughs> yeah, well done. I don't care. I'm on board for all. I think he's working on a um, Peter Pan one as well. I think I read that somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's all very depressing. Uh, and then the f- <laughs> we're, we're definitely watching Blood and Honey 2 when it comes out. The final piece of news, which I've never seen this before. Okay. So excuse me if, if everyone knows about this already, but I thought it was worthy of inclusion. Uh, so Jodie Foster's been doing a lot of press because the new series of True Detective... Yes, she's in that, isn't she? ...has just arrived, which, again, critically seems to be doing very well. And uh, she has said that she had to turn down the role of Princess Leia... Oh, really? ...in I 1977 uh, due to scheduling conflicts because she had a contract with Disney. Yeah. Uh, How weird that that's come full circle and it wouldn't have mattered now. Sure. <laughs> How strange. Uh, that's it. That's the news. I just thought that was really interesting. I did not I'd, know that that I, was a thing. I never knew that that had been offered, offered to anyone else. Has Jodie Foster made that up? <laughs> Who are we to say? Just Jodie Foster. Uh, that's all the news. Excellent. Good news. Well done. Uh, have you watched anything good at the top of the stream? I've watched... I've mostly watched. I, I must say it didn't have my attention completely. Okay. Uh, the... Netflix hit series yeah. that everyone seems to be talking about slash watch yeah. Fool Me Once Every, I haven't watched it but everybody in the whole world apart from me has any uh, good? Uh, I, you don't, uh, your face I doesn't didn't. shout that I, it was good I, look it was I think it was a good hook the first couple of episodes Yeah, it gets increasingly stupid <laughs> and then I, I just I find it really what's the difference between doing like a good pulpy thriller yeah because that's kind of what these books are based on all these harlan coven books aren't yeah they? yeah yeah that's what he does isn't it versus it just veering into i find it difficult to withhold my disbelief at some of the oh, really? lurches in plot okay um i also of a mark whisper it i don't think michelle keegan was very good <gasps> you can't say that everyone's saying how good she is <laughs> 
Um, I was listening to a podcast and I think it was Ed Gamble was talking about it. And he said he lost it completely when somebody's phone rang and instead of the name coming up of who it was, it said sister-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, <laughs> like, it's that sort of thing. Who stills their name in the phone as sister-in-law? And yeah. then apparently when Joanna Lumley rang, her picture came up on the phone and it was her press shot from the TV show. Nice. And I'm like, yeah, that, I think I would have lost it at that point as well. And he's like, I gave up on it at that point. Um it has made me think I'm going to store all my family members in my phone as what they are to me rather than yeah, their names. Nice. <laughs> like brother, <laughs> sister-in-law, mum. I'd, I'd store you I in... my mum is in there as mum, to be fair. I'd store you in my phone as podcast, podcast associate. <laughs> podcast co-host. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Let's do it to each other. <laughs> Who's texting you? My podcast co-host. <laughs> Uh, other than that, I've carried on watching The Traitors, which I don't want to talk about, other than to just say it's still amazing. It's the best show on TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's Quite as simple, simple as that. I hate a reality TV show, and I will go to bat for The Traitors with anybody. I think it is incredible. Um, how about you? I've been away, as I said, so I haven't watched an awful lot of stuff. And my brother, my brother, well, I went with my brother, and he took a fire stick with him. Yeah. And he was like, we'll watch Netflix or something. Didn't take the remote, did he? Oh, nice. So on Saturday night, I had That's to watch... Who sounds like your brother? <laughs> on Saturday night, I had to watch Anton Deck and Michael McIntyre. And I'm like, <laughs> this is a holiday. <laughs> it was like having a holiday from real life. Although the Anton Deck show is not bad. I'm never going to watch it again. <laughs> um, I have watched, I am up to date with Percy Jackson and the Olympians okay. on Disney+. Plus. I think uh, I will. I will watch this with my eldest daughter. Oh, she though. will love it. Yeah, I am very much enjoying it. It's really good. Um, they go. I don't know much about Percy Jackson. I haven't even seen the movie. Yeah. I don't know much about the stories or anything. But the guy who's playing the kid from the Adam Project is playing Percy Jackson. And <laughs> I just thought something else to watch. So we okay. we've got to mention. <laughs> okay, uh, he's brilliant in it, and he's playing it really well. And all the other kids in it are really good. Cool. But Edge turned up in it the other night. Yeah, I've heard he's. he's yeah. Is he one of the gods? He's Aries, I okay. think. Um, so yeah, I was I did the wrestler, not the guitarist. No, yeah, <laughs> that'd be even weirder. Yeah, I was watching. It, I was like, that sounds like Edge's voice. You know, when you're just like, and I looked at the screen, I was like, oh, that is Edge. How weird. Um, so yeah, I've been watching that. I've also watched a bit more of the Brothers Son. Yes, the uh, Michelle Yeoh's new Netflix show. That's quite good. It's quite entertaining. Yeah. It's very much tongue in cheek martial arty movie. Yeah, TV show. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's quite good. Cool. I think that's all I've watched. Did you not watch on your holiday? Because you could have done. The relaunch of Gladiators. I <laughs> saw the last two games and the finale because we'd been swimming and we just got back as we turned it on. But I, do, my, I haven't seen it all. My eldest daughter loved it. Really? Like properly was into it. That's good. Because that's what it's aimed at, isn't it? Yeah. Because we said, oh God, give this a go because we, we used to watch we, it when we, 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 watch were, kids it when we were kids and, yeah. on a Saturday night. And it's... I really enjoyed it. The point I turned it on was when that guy pulled his leg. He, he was doing gauntlet and yeah. he pulled a muscle in his leg yeah. or something. That's when we turned it on. That just happened. Yeah, I, I, it, it felt very much like I was watching yeah, the Gladiators. Much, they hadn't yeah. changed much about it. Um, I think, you know, I think I think there'll be more new games as the as Yeah, the I'm sure there will. And more new Gladiators. But essentially, well, it's so. not the format is exactly the same. I wonder if they're all sleeping with each other and doing drugs backstage <laughs> like they were back then. That was a great documentary. It was. Really, if you've not watched that Gladiators documentary on Netflix, check that out. It was really good. So yeah, I think that that will, yeah, that my family will definitely go back for more on that. I think I'll probably watch a bit more of that. Awesome. Yeah, I, d- I didn't get to see it all, but I did see the end. Um, I, I'm generally racking my brains to think if there's anything else, and I don't think there is this week. I Fine. think that is it. Awesome. Cool. I, I've, I've totally lost track of time. How are we Me too. Time? <laughs> Let's have a look. How are we doing all right? Should we quickly run through the top tens? Yeah, we we've not done, done that, that this season. It doesn't feel like we've done it for a long time. That's because we had we've Christmas got stuff off. To do. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, so we should we start with films? Sure. Top ten films in the UK. Uh, currently at number ten is Sing 2. I watched that over Christmas. Did you? Yeah, so I, I enjoyed it. I went that. to the cinema to see that. Oh, I was okay till Bono came on. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought exactly the same thing. Uh, number nine, The Wolf and the Lion. Okay. Any ideas what that is? It looks like it would make me cry. Yeah, it uh, does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, that wolf's well cute. I yeah. think it would. Do you think Second they'll end up not getting 10? on? <laughs> Nature and all that? No, it doesn't It doesn't look like it's going to be aggressive. <laughs> I think they're going to be friendly. That's what it wants you to think. Number eight, Edge of Darkness. Oh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson pointing a gun at me. Whatever happened to him? Well, it did ever happen to him. <laughs> 
Uh, number seven, The Transporter 2. Now this is already a very random <laughs> this selection. Is very movies. random list. The sort of mid-2000s Jason, Jason Statham, Statham movie. Uh, number six is Dune. Okay. Dune? Dune? Dune. Wh- whichever you prefer. I uh, don't prefer any of them because it's <laughs> awful. <laughs> You'll still go to the, see- the sequel. I absolutely will not go to see the sequel. I'm quite excited about the next one. I noticed the <laughs> next one was on Netflix and I'm like, shall I... And I haven't yet. No, I haven't yet either. But I kind of want to. Quickly on Dune. Yeah. I, I will not go and see Dune 2 because I hated Dune so much, but that will be the first Timothy Chalamet film that I haven't seen. You'll, you'll do but it I've, at some point. I won't. You'll have to be a completist. I'm not going to. Number five on the list is Morbius. Yeah. I feel like I need to. Me too. Just to see how bad it actually <laughs> yeah. is. Uh, but it's doing all right. It's number five on the list. First week in the chart. This list is mainly first weeks on the charts. Yeah. That. Yeah. Refresh from Netflix. Number four, The Proposal. It's not new films. <laughs> They're just new to Netflix. Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock. Yeah, from again. Like from late 90s, early 2000s? No, it will be about 2008, something like that. I okay. don't know exactly. Uh, number three, Society of the Snow. Yeah. That is the one we were just talking about. I will watch that this weekend. I will, I will report back. Uh, number two, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah. I didn't know that was on there, to be honest. My kids were watching it at the weekend. It's good. Sunday yeah, afternoon. It yeah, I, I remember going to cinema to see it. Good. Uh, number one is another thing that everybody seems to be talking about is Lift. This is Kevin, Kevin Hart, Hart doing acting. Yes. That's not... Very good, apparently. <laughs> well, I was going to say not uh, not his <laughs> no, usual not comedy. comedic. He's put a turtleneck on. Does that mean... <laughs> is that how you try and be serious? <laughs> Everybody in the back... It's a heist film on a it is plane, on a plane, isn't it? Yeah. So he's at the front, the front forefront of this picture, and everybody standing behind him is looks like they're thinking, "Is that Kevin Hart?" <laughs> There's like six people standing behind him, and none of them look like they can believe this guy. Looks like he can't believe he's there in the first place, but everybody else looks like. Um, well, what's with the like olive filter on it? As yeah, well? it's just. With movie posters are so shit. shit aren't this they? one is. Look, like... this, there's a plane here, but then there's also a wall here. <laughs> Make any sense? Right, should we move on to TV shows? Yes, please. TV shows in the UK. Currently, number ten is The Stranger. I feel like people have gone. People are rewatching Harlan their Corbin's other Harlan stuff. Corbin yeah. stuff. Uh, number nine, Ricky Gervais Armageddon. Let's okay. quickly move on. Uh, number eight, Boy Swallows Universe. It's the next on my list. I remember talking about this ages, ages ago, ago that it was that it was in production, and I've seen the trailer, and I'm really looking forward to watching. One hundred percent. As soon as I finish The Brother's Son, that will be my next show that I go to. But I've heard really good things about yeah. it as well. I'm hearing good, really good reviews on it. It's definitely my next on my list. Uh, number seven is Louder Milk. Oh, it's got... I don't know what it is. Nor do I. But it's got Ron Livingston in it. Yeah. I really like Ron Livingston. I can't say I've heard of that. It no, looks like it's only that. just come out. Season one is the second week on the charts. I might check that up, uh, look that up after this. Uh, number six is The Deceived, season one. They is look that, like moody. Is that another Harlan Coburn thing? The, the, that guy with a beard, the I recognise him from that sort of thing. Yeah, is I don't recognise that title, but it might very well okay. be. Um, number five is You Are What You Eat, a twin experiment. Okay. This is the new documentary that Netflix have produced. Have you heard about it? No, this? I haven't. So they're basically taking two twins and... Four people? No. Two, a <laughs> set. A set of, I think there's more than a set of twins. Okay. There's a set of twins, but one's having a vegan diet and one isn't. Right. And it's to see the health benefits okay. of two people who are identical. I'm with you. Going on different diets. I think that's what it is. And number four is Safe. That's the one Harlan Coben show that I have seen. That's the one I've seen that one. Michael C. Hall in. That was... That was. I think it was the first one. It was all right. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, number three is The Brother's Son, as I just mentioned. That's the one I'm currently in the middle of. I think I've done four. It's quite entertaining. He had a fight with a guy in a dinosaur costume the other day. Nice. It's that sort of tongue-in-cheek yeah. martial arts movie humour. Uh, number two, I Am a Stalker. This is another true crime documentary that's interviewing people is it interviews been... with actual stalkers. criminal stalkers. stalkers yeah okay and number one is Harlan Coben's Fool Me Once with Michelle Keegan and Joanna Lumley yeah <laughs> it's getting all sorts of the good numbers it's only been out a couple of weeks but it's doing uh, it's doing really well people just team, send, tend to love his stuff it's just it's just bubblegum TV isn't yeah. it it's just bubblegum for the eyes it's yeah. just easy to watch and that's your top tens for the week Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Right, I think we've done a wave. I should say so. I don't think we've missed anything there, do you? I don't. There was a, a request for a real talk. Oh, was there? In the Discord. Okay. But I think maybe let's let's 
it was in the wrong channel. <laughs> okay. So let's we'll I, put it back must, out. Was that why we'll, I was away? I don't think I've seen we'll, that. We'll, uh, let's throw it together for next week. Okay. So. That's good. So the return of real talk next week. That's yeah. exciting. Cool. So yeah, we'll go away now. We're going to talk about the German comedy Hard Feelings. We sure are. And uh, come back on Thursday to listen to that episode. I'm going downstairs to look and see if you've really got a spiralizer because I think you might you have. Go and have a look if you want. <laughs> if you can find one, I'll spiralize you something, but <laughs> I haven't. Excellent. Thank you for that. And we'll be back on Thursday. Cheers. Bye.